and, and stuff. So, what's going on, brother? Hell of people jumping on, man. Um, yes, I do have a YouTube page. YouTube page is my full name, Desi Alexander at gmail dot com. You you can see it as soon as you look it up. So, just look up Desi Alexander. It's just it's gonna pop up. So, where's my? There we go. Cool. A man right here. Throw my man on. Mr. X G M. Let me see. Uh, I, I hope I don't pronounce it wrong. Let me see. Uh, quick. So we're shooting. We, we call my man real quick. Ladies and gentlemen. Hello. What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? I'm good, good brother. How you doing, my brother? You're truly blessed, brother. I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm just. I'm all over the place. So yeah, my, my, my heart is in this shit. So you already know, man. No doubt, no doubt, family, man. First and foremost. What made you say, I'm going to be a comedian? Being being raised under it first. You know mm. what I'm saying? Having my dad sit me down watching Richard Pryor, watching Eddie, and me figuring out why these people funny. You know, fast forward, I was always, my mom was a writer. She was a playwright. She always had me in her productions. I always had a script in my hand. I was always on the stage acting. You know what I'm saying? Straight away from me for a while, playing basketball, hooping. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really do it. I was still acting, but it wasn't as much as basketball. But it was like, once I stopped playing basketball, it was like one of them contests. I was downstairs at a restaurant, and it was like the comedy club was upstairs. Mm -hmm. and I was like, and I was on a date at the time. The girl was like, you should, you should do that. You should try that. And I was like, I don't even know. I thought you had to be like a special, like in a league or something to be a comedian. Like you had to like try out first. And it was like, it's an open mic. It's like a contest. And I went up there. Mm. I wrote my little five-minute spill. And I told my first joke. I told everybody, all the people to come out, you know what I'm saying? And once I told my first joke, bro, like, and everybody laughed, and I was just standing there like, this shit worked. I was like, you know mm. what? I, I said in my mind on that stage, I want to do this for the rest of my entire life. Wow. That's when I decided that was it. You know what I'm saying? So what is some of your inspiration, like, to do some of the comedy skits you be doing, the sketches? Oh, man. It's... It's more so to me. It's just people, man. Like we we come across so many different, uh, just walks of life. People, with different experiences in their lives, man. I'll try to make my stuff as relatable as possible, as original as possible. You know, what I'm sure. saying? a lot of people. I, that's like the most, the biggest compliment to me is like, I feel like you already know me. Like you already in my life. How did you know this be happening? And people don't know. I'm 35. I lived. The, I lived a life. Okay. I, I have a long stretch of shit that has happened to me that I've been through. And I like to put it in, in a form of, of comedy for all of us to laugh at because we take life so serious now. Everybody's just so sensitive now, of course. So I try to, you know, bring light to a lot of things also. Aside from taking those skits, a lot of those skits are stuff that I wrote that I haven't put on stage. Or it's a joke that I like, I look back at the sketch like, damn, I ain't never seen that on stage. So it's like a revolving door of just material for me that I always look at and I keep pulling back and forth like some sketches, some something, something may not work on stage, I'd be like, oh, that shit didn't work on stage. But but when mm. I do it as a sketch, that shit knock. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Something that I'll, you know, do as, as in a sketch a long time ago, I'll just be scrolling through my stuff and be like, damn, man, I could just, you know, put that as, as actual material. So yeah, man, just life experience, man, for real. Got you. What's that process like when you're creating a sketch? Like what's the motivation? Like you oh, gotta man. Do you smoke, you drink, or you know, watch? It's, it's yeah. like, it's like, I just be, I just get quiet. Like, my girl knows, she know when I sit down and I be chilling for a while, and I'm just staring at a blank, at a blank space like a weirdo, you know, that she know I'm in my mind, like, putting the math together, piecing together the words, piecing together the joke, how I'm going to put this, that, put the words under the music. It's like, I, I think in, like, in stories and music, I think mm. like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's always like a it's just me just getting quiet for a second. I just be in a in a complete zone. Like when I'm when I go to the movies, to me, the best, most funnest part of the movies is the previews. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I go see a movie, if you get the damn movie, I'm going to go see because the previews are always like doom, 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 doom. Wow. It's so much it's like the best parts. You know what I'm saying? And I get so inspired randomly by just trails. I just be sitting there in the movie theater like, man, man, and I and I be in the movie theater writing while I'm watching the movie. You know what I'm mm. saying? So it's just a lot of different ways to, to to just get yourself prepared for it. But people be thinking, I smoke. I don't even smoke. People are like, you don't smoke? I'm like, no, I'm just already a naturally right. goofy motherfucker. So, yeah. That's dope. <laughs> so, you filming and editing your own sketches, or you got a team? Yep. I do it all myself. That's, 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 that comes from being impatient, being uh, independent, knowing that if you don't get it done, 
ain't nobody gonna get it done. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. and I got tired of when I first started doing it. I used to try to rally everybody up to do it, a whole bunch of comedians, a whole bunch. But niggas got schedules, niggas got life, it's stuff going on. Some people ain't, ain't on the same mind frame as you. Some people ain't serious. Some people don't even believe in themselves as much as you believe in them. You know mm. what I'm saying? To, to just jump out there and try. That was deep. That's so, deep. Absolutely. Yeah, and, 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 and you just find yourself saying, you know what, I got to do this shit myself, bro. Like this, like 2020, I'm, I'm about to learn a lot of shit by myself. I'm about to just learn shit just so I can do it on my own so I ain't got to sit with nobody. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how you get shit done. That's how I'm able to produce so fast and so much because I'm doing it all myself. You know what I'm saying? So definitely, I gotta ask you a quick question because you brought up um Eddie Murphy as an influence mm -hmm. earlier in the interview. How you feel about Eddie Murphy in 2019, 2020? Dolomites, my name, Eddie Murphy on Saturday Night Live. Like you digging Eddie? Like or you think Eddie need to? My my opinion, my opinion of Eddie is biased. Because, okay. like I said, because I grew up, I got my, you know, I got my name from Eddie Murphy. A lot of people don't know that. Oh, wow. My name for, from, if you watch Eddie Murphy Delirious, he has a uh -huh. joke about Desi Arnaz. Wow. The joke he does about Desi Arnaz. And, my, and it came out in 84 when I was born, and my dad named me after that joke. And I always, I always been an Eddie fan, you know what I'm saying? Mm. He, if we, I, we've been waiting for him to come back out, but it's like, you see his transition from how, how young he was. There's no beast like that, like, to be that hot early in their 20s enough to just chill for this long, it's hard to come back stronger. You know what I'm saying? It's really yeah. hard. That's why I look at, I look at Dave. That's why I look at Dave like he the GOAT. You look at Dave Chappelle mm -hmm. like, how the hell? He, this nigga left comedy for a while mm -hmm. and then came back stronger, making more money. So that's that's the goal. That's the dream. But as far as looking at Eddie Murphy, man, I always look at him like how I look at my dad because that's, he, he was one of the first comedians my father set me in front of, aside from Richard Pryor. You know what I'm saying? I always I always look at Eddie like, I'm glad he back. I'm glad. It, it is, to me, Eddie Murphy... Is comedy like how you look at Stevie Wonder when you hear Stevie Wonder sing? When you hear him talk, Stevie Wonder is music. Like his his voice, period, is just music. When you hear Eddie Murphy and you see him, you just automatically know comedy. But he ain't even trying to be funny. You just looking at him, wait for him to say something funny. You just looking at him with his rhythm, like the way he talk. He speaks in comedy. You know what I'm saying? So, Fact. Yeah, man. Eddie Murphy definitely one of the goats. Um, mm -hmm. you looking forward to that coming to America too? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Man. A lot of a lot of I'm getting. I, I try not to get other people's opinions on things because mm -hmm. a lot of people say you don't touch. That's a classic. You can't touch a classic. But at the same time, you don't know what how it's gonna come out. You don't know who they're putting in it to. Who you don't know who writing it. I'm just. I'm just. First of all, glad he's still alive, still here. I'm glad he's he's touching on classic movies that you know have been with us throughout our entire lives. You know what I'm saying? For them to to redo it. I, I just want to see what happened. I just want to see what, what's what's in store for us as far as that movie. Got you. What's that life like being on the road with um Jess Hilarious and all that? Fun, man. It's it's very productive. It's it's no stress. Like we bring so much to the table as far as as far as comedy, as far as making each other stronger. Like I be looking at a lot of these different tours, and sometimes they be having their little back and forth and riffs, but mm. I don't. We don't. Argue. We don't have time to argue about. So we like that's literally like my sister in comedy and in life because when we get around each other, we sit and watch comedy, analyze it, do the math, and then like we just talk about it. You know what I'm saying? We talk about ideas. We write down mm -hmm. scripts. That's literally all we do when we're hanging out. We eat, play Uno, comedy. That's all we do. Eat, play Uno, comedy. Like constantly on a, on a, on a forever team. Like and nobody. It's like a lot of comedians. You know sometimes they have a life outside of it that, that, that mm -hmm. you know, did you do other things, other hobbies? And people ask me, what do I do for fun? I'm already doing all that, what I want to do for fun. Like this, like when we go to show, y'all don't party after y'all don't, like, yo, we just had mad fun doing this show, entertaining y'all, you know what I'm saying? That was our turn up. That was it for us, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, yeah. Salute. How far y'all go back? Man, uh, as far as comedy, around like 2014, 2015, when she started getting like bigger and bigger in comedy as far as Instagram, you know, it was it was like I was the one that she sat and watched on stage. Like oh, I would wow. I would do I would do open mics, but she when she would come to open mics, I noticed that she was a student in comedy just like me. She wasn't up there thinking she knew anything just cause mm -hmm. she got, you know, all these followers. She was literally in the clubs in comedy clubs, sitting and watching people. She'd get on stage, 
do her spill and she would see these jokes bomb and sit right down like I'm not using that shit I'm not using that like I would see her do that and then when I would get on stage she would like look up and just sit front row and just watch me on stage you know what I'm saying then we would talk afterwards I would give her pointers you know what I'm saying I would just always congratulate her on her on her like on her, on her upcoming as far as like Instagram because at the time you know she had like 50, 60,000 followers and, to, uh -huh. and that then was like millions now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that, yeah, then I was like, you, you, can host yeah. party, you can host parties with 50,000 people, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and she was really making an impact on, I, and you can tell it was a certain wave of, of Instagram comedians that was coming out, that was making that change on the gram, like her, you know, DC Young Fly, the guys that was roasting people, you know what I'm saying? Just the content creators. And I wasn't even there yet as far as making videos. I was just straight stand up then. I ain't do no videos. I had like YouTube videos, old joints, but it was all long and drawn out. But mm -hmm. you know, once we, once she started doing like show shows, she, I would, I would headline her shows. Like I would just show. She would ask me like, "Yo, can you please come out and just close my show?" Because she, I called this person. They trying to charge me over the head. Because people think just because you got a lot of files, you got money. So when she would mm -hmm. have these big shows, you mm -hmm. know. The other headliners she would call be like, no, nah, I want I want eight thousand dollars. They trying they try they trying to hit over the head. And she yeah. and I had and I was teaching at the time, so I would be like, I have hella material because when you a teacher, that's all you're around is material. You know what I'm saying? Kids is funny as hell. So Facts. I would just tell her like I'm coming through. Like our headline is cool and she and I would do it for free. And she mm -hmm. would she would pay me, but it was like I don't I do that I would do this for free if I could. You know what I'm saying? She mm -hmm. always appreciated me coming through, doing the shows for free and killing it and then I would be helping her back and forth she would get on and off stage trying new material as she hosted it and then once she started the tour she was like yo this is it bro like you gotta quit your job bro we about to go on the road wow and I was about to ask was... you that too I was about to ask yeah. you that how you balance being a teacher and a comedian you know what I mean uh, I was trying to it's funny because I was uh, I quit teaching right before the tour with her started but it was the time where I quit because I felt like I have to take on this full time I have to try this shit full time you know what I'm saying? I really was like, I'm taking a chance on myself at this point. No, no plan. No, uh, <laughs> I ain't have nothing to think about as far as how am I going to get paid? I just believe in you. Like, nigga, it was just a spirit. It was like, you have to quit teaching because you can't mm -hmm. be in one place at one time. If you want to do this, you can't hit the road. You know what I'm saying? If you want to do this. So I stacked Back. up and I was just like the night before Halloween, I, I quit and I went to school mm. and, I, and I just felt God like, yo, you ain't going to make it. Like, God, like, you ain't going to make it through this whole day, bro. Like, this ain't for you no more. Like, you have to transition. I was like, I can't make – sometimes you just feel that spirit say, say, tell you what to do. Like, yo, do your resignation now. And I did my resignation <laughs> on my lunch break. And the so it was, a, it was a gut feeling that made you yeah, make that final decision. Yeah, it, it was, it, it, I can't even explain it, man. But the mm -hmm. people that have been through that, that had that happen to them, they know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? When you feel God, you feel that, that energy like, nigga, you ain't going to make it, bro. It's time. It's your time. Go for it. Yeah, I know you're scared. I know you you worried about you know being stable. I know you mm -hmm. trying to be comfortable with getting your you know being able to take care of yourself and all this your lifestyle. But it's like God is like, bro, it's time for to to be uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? That, that's it. Got you. Did you like yeah. think about the money that you need to save just in case you know it get a little shaky on the road? You know what's crazy? The the thing about my me in general, I like to take care of everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My like my my old roommate uh, of seven years, he he's in town for the weekend. I took him in at seventeen. Not like the nigga was homeless or nothing, but he was just somebody I rocked out with. It was cool. You know what I'm saying? I hung out with him and he just stayed at night over my house one time and from then on it was like my little brother. And he lived with me for like seven years. And I was mm -hmm. always used to taking care of everybody. You know what I'm saying? And my mom was just like, Nas, it's your turn to be taken care of sit back and watch the people allow the people that you took care of to take care of you that's why you're here like now it's your turn and that was hard bro because I'm, I'm very I, I have pride you know what i'm saying like i don't want i don't want to ask nobody for nothing you mm. know what i'm saying around that time it was just rough because it was like everything was just falling apart and it was like bro i remember going to the movies with like seven dollars and change just so i could see this movie to be inspired just to keep my mm. fucking spirits up but it was like the people and i wouldn't say nothing that i was struggling i wouldn't tell nobody but the people around me that was close to me knew they, and they took care of me but it was just like nah man you do stuff for everybody bro it's your time you have to like you have to like people literally was like no i'm not gonna let you be hungry i'm not gonna let you not have no bread you know what i'm saying i got you and as, as men you just you be proud you be like no nah, man i don't 
I ain't with that. I'm good. I'm not, you be hungry and shit. You be broke as fuck. But, you, but your pride don't let you say that. But people mm. that, that and it also shows the people who was just using you too. You know, mm. I'm not saying anybody got to give to you, but it also shows who really got your back in the moment. Got so that shit, that shit gotta happen to you. You know what I'm saying? For you to really separate and keep the ones that that, that really are down for you around, and it separates yourself from the ones who just fucking use you from jump. You know, so yeah. yeah. Now I'm gonna ask you this: What's some of the highs and lows of that comedian grind? Mm, the highs and lows is. It's, Give me the highs first. Give me the highs. Oh, the, oh, the highs, man. Is when well, I watched Hustle, uh, that show with Ti uh, Rhythm and Flow. I watched that. He said you gonna be when the guy when uh, uh D Smoke won. Ti oh. said something. He said, "Yo, you gonna be chasing this feeling for the rest of your life." Mm. And and he was not lying. That that feeling mm. of getting on that stage in a room full of strangers and making them all laugh at one thing. It just it's it's bigger than just making them laugh. It's just making everybody connect at one time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. the latch that people have on you because you made them laugh. You know, it's not about just trying to be in front of the I'm not about, you know, being, you know, flashy or wanting anybody to pay attention to me. I'm just about connection, bro. And the people that are connected to me from me making them laugh, it's an immense amount of love. You know what I'm saying? I get so many DMs like you you help me do this and you don't even know you're doing it. You just like mm -hmm. making people laugh for the for the for the fun of it. But the the connection you get through people, man, when you do stand up is different. You know what I'm saying? It's a different type of love you get from people. It's like a, a you got a magical power that you do that you just control people with and you bringing them out of something that they really don't even understand that they like under like whatever they mad about, whatever they said about, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's the highest for me, man. Connection. Got you. Now give me give me some of the lows. The lows are just expectations on what you think is supposed to go on. Your time frame. You you worrying about aging. You're worrying about your progress. You seeing motherfuckers take your material you seeing motherfuckers progressing mm. ahead of you think and you feel like you ain't you feel like you worked harder than them and then you know you feel like they took some shit that you was was getting was gunning for you know what i'm saying the uh -huh. you know the, the the being bumped you know what i'm saying like when you first start in comedy don't nobody know you you know what i'm saying so uh -huh. <laughs> you go to a comedy show i mean i can promise you a spot in the show you go there and some big top comedian that been doing it for years or a nigga that's cool with the host will, you know what I'm saying, be like, oh, all right, my bad. What just just showed up, man. You got bumped, man. I'm sorry. But you you didn't already told a whole bunch of people to come out, your coworkers, your family, and you get bumped. You know what I'm saying? The the, the failed material. Not it, I think failed material. Not not even more so failed material, just failed energy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you when you come off wrong on stage and and your jokes don't hit it like they like they supposed to or like they normally do. That shit hurt because you know you Dang. work and wrote this shit, but it's like it don't hit a certain way. It's not even sometimes about it not being funny. It's just the way you positioned mm -hmm. it. Sometimes comedy is moments. You taking advantage of moments and being able to to position a specific joke for the just the room itself, the crowd, the sound of your voice, the, that pitch, that the separation in the joke, all that shit, man. That shit matters. Mm -hmm. man. The lows is always... You know, it's really, and it's all in our heads, man. The, you know, the anxieties we have, the depression. They say comedians are very sad people. Like one chick I was dating, her father was like, you sure you want, her mother was like, you sure you want to date him? Like comedians are very depressed and sad people. And I don't, I don't, I don't believe that, but it's just like, oh, we wow. tend to, we, comedians uh, tend to make the darkest shit funny. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes we have to dwell in dark <laughs> shit to really come up with stuff. And sometimes... Yeah. That's the some, can't, some people can't dig their way out. Some people be in that deep, sh dark shit, man, and they really look at, they be so focused on what they don't have, man. That's that's a, that's a big low. We focus on what we don't have, you know, because mm. we want to be great. We all want to have that that big crowd that's laughing. We all want to make everybody feel good. We, let me say something funny about comedians. We will be in a room full of 20,000 people or 100 people. We will focus on the one nigga that's not laughing. And be mad at the end of the show because that one nigga was like, but not like, or or we we a killer set, you know what I'm saying? And then we'll focus on one person that came up to you and said, no, you should have said blah blah blah, or the set that wasn't good though. We'll focus on that shit for the rest of the night for some reason I don't know what it is, but I've I've been there I've I've been at that point. But now it's like I don't give a fuck now. I know I'm doing my thing now. I can do nothing but rise at this point. But at the same time, the lows is just like our own being trapped in our own mind, Joe. Got you. Big low, you know. Now, if you was put under pressure, right? Mm -hmm. Like something life threatening, 
Because some people fold under pressure. Could you perform, like, if your life depended on it, to be, like, the funniest nigga on earth, the funniest man, whatever? I if, have. If you had a gun in your head. <laughs> mm. I have, man, because I learned from Chris Rock, it don't matter what happens. I gotta make these people laugh. He said, "Somebody can come in this crowd and get somebody can shoot a nigga in the crowd. It's up to me to bring this crowd back up." Mm. Cause I've been to that. I've been dragged to the lowest of lows in my life, as far as losing something like, and that was my father. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I lost my dad oh, in 2009. Wow. My condolences, man. I, yeah, thank you, man. I, 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 when I lost him in 2009, the talk I had with my mother, she said, "The way you feel now, nothing can hurt you." as bad as this. That I and she told the truth. She was just speaking it like out loud, but it was the truth. Nothing has ever hurt me deeper than me losing my dad. You know what I'm saying? And she said, Don't let nobody take away your joy after that. Nothing after this, it's only up. If you can perform after this, because I was really like, I don't want to do this shit no more. I only want to mm -hmm. be I just want to hide in my own little cubby hole and listen to Kid Cuddy and be left the fuck alone for a while. You know and that's what I did. You know, for a few weeks I was just like, I don't even want to be bothered because I never but not been able to not control crying, you know what I'm saying? Not control just dark energy. Like that was the mm -hmm. first time in my life I really was experiencing true fucking depression, bro. You know what wow. I'm saying? Not not being able to control not crying, bro. Like at the drop of a hat, I just start fucking crying. Like if I hear mm -hmm. some shit from the Temptations or just see a color or smell something, it would remind me of my dad. I would just break down, bro, like to my knees and be crying. Cause mm -hmm. he was one of the people that really had an effect on me, not only me, but everybody in my neighborhood. He was everybody dad. So me having, I did a show right after he passed away, like around my birthday. And I, I I did, that was the first time I did like an hour on stage. I really put it all on the line. My brother was like, yo, this is, this proves that you can prove, you can, you can, you can dance in the fire, bro. Like, mm. cause I don't know how the fuck you did it. I don't know. I, my brother was in his, in his, in his little dog space. He was like, nigga, you inspired me to come out of my shit. And you, my mm. little brother, you, you wow. the big brother now. You know what I'm saying? So. I feel mm -hmm. like if I can survive that, if I can get through that, my nigga, the sky's the limit. I can't, I can't be fucked with. You know what I'm saying? So. Got you. Let me ask you this now. Mm -hmm. How many times you made a chick laugh out of her panties? It's been a lot of times. You know, <laughs> comedians. That's a, that's a special power the comedians have, and uh -huh. no, I don't think I think comedians always win because at the end of the day, we make fun of ourselves, even if the shit don't work. We gonna we gonna we gonna get a joke out of it. We gonna get some fun out of it. But it's always the the this this that uh, the allure of a comedian. They they want to know more about you know what what makes him talk about that. You know that, that in my early days that was I was yeah I was all over the place. I was mm -hmm. I, you'd have been ashamed of me. I was <laughs> I was I was wilding. But yeah, man, it, it's it's been a lot of time. Like I have I, I had my first groupie when I was like. In my first year, I was just excited. Somebody was actually trying to meet me. Like, oh my god, I was looking like, man, I got a groupie, man. This is crazy. God damn. Mm. I felt like, it was like a, I felt like a power. Like, I can, I can make people laugh and get in the panties. Back, <laughs> but that was that was the young version of myself. But yeah, man, absolutely, man. All comedians had that superpower, man. So that's what's up, man. Mm -hmm. You know, like I told you before earlier. This is just going to be an introduction. We're going to do a full in depth face to face interview on M Red TV. Yes, sir. Probably yes, yes, man. Most at the YouTube bro. space or up in mm -hmm. Harlem at my man. I can't wait, bro. Can't wait. Official SPS Studios and all that. So, you know, but um, I appreciate you, homie. I ain't going to hold you up. You got a billion things to do. I got a billion things Much to love, do. Man. Absolutely. And man. Um, just, let, just let them know, man, you tune into M Red TV. I'm, I'm, yo, this is Desi, man. I'm tuning to Embrek TV. I'll be in New York soon. See y'all live, man. Thank y'all so much for coming out, man. Peace. No doubt. Peace, family. Salute. One.